Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for choosing Across the Fence. I'm Will Michael, in today for Judy Simpson. Vermont is the second oldest state in the country, and by 2030, it's estimated that one in three Vermonters will be over the age of 60. What does getting older mean in the 21st century, and how can Vermont as a state best help us to remain as healthy and as independent as we can for as long as we can? Well, Older Americans Month offers us a time to reflect on some of these questions, as well as on the contributions older Vermonters make in our communities every day, and the supports we all need to age successfully. So today we've asked guests from the Vermont Department of Disabilities, Aging, and Independent Living to be with us to discuss Older Americans Month, healthy and independent living, and the supports and services that help us all as we age. So joining me this afternoon are Angela smith Diang, who heads the state unit on aging, and alongside Angela is Amber Fulcher. Amber is the director of the Assistive Technology Program. And I wanna say good afternoon to both of you, and thanks for coming in. Thank you. Yeah, yeah thanks for having us. Great to be here. Angela, what is Older <coughs> Americans Month? What is it that we are celebrating? Yeah, so Older Americans Month comes around every May, and it's um, led by our Administration for Community Living and, uh, and Dale at the state level. And we're celebrating the supports and services that are in place for Vermonters to help us all age well and age in place as we'd like to, um, as well as the um, thousands of Vermonters yeah. who are contributing to our communities every day um, giving back, working, volunteering, supporting um, our communities. So it's really an opportunity to say, hey, you know what? We're all aging and <laughs> there's so much that we can do together in that process. And I think what you just said is <laughs> maybe among the most important, as we said at the beginning, where Vermont is one of the oldest states mm -hmm. in the country. We are aging. There are more and more of us every day. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Uh, uh, a chance to celebrate and uh, all the services and things that are, that are available. Talk a little bit about uh, the role of the department, disabilities, aging, and independent living. Mm -hmm. What is it that we do? What uh, services that you offer? And the role for older Vermonters. Right. So um, at Dale, we are the designated agency to oversee programs for older Vermonters, specifically um, the programs of the Older Americans Act, which is over 50 years old, but has come a long way in terms of the, the folks that we serve. Over 60,000 Vermonters benefit from um, yeah. these services and supports, and it's everything from Meals on Wheels to um, <clears throat> legal services, mental health services, transportation assistance, um, supports to help people transition from a hospital back home, um, all kinds of things as we think about what, what, what um, people need to just be able to stay healthy and independent and live, live well in their home. What we know is that 90% of Vermonters want to be able to live in their home as long as they can and, and not have to, um, leave that leave that space so how do we help them do that and that's what the programs of the older americans act and the additional long-term care kind of supports that we have in place that's what they do and unless you've been in that situation just one small example transportation mm -hmm. um and again unless you've been in that situation you've been without it you don't really know how difficult that can be especially as we age so uh there was a number of things that you mentioned, but I know transportation was one that, st that struck out for me, again, in part because we're in such a rural state. Exactly, and I think Vermont has done a good job of recognizing those yep. kinds of challenges that we have as a state and saying, okay, well, what can we do? And where do we need to go, knowing that we're, we have more and more people that, mm -hmm. are, that are facing that challenge? And I don't know about this. What about uh, Vermonters as they age in the workforce? It's mm -hmm. a really important economic question for the state. Um, but is, yeah. it, is it a place, workforce development, that, that your department is involved in? Definitely, definitely. And we see a, a real opportunity in our older workforce. You know, people are choosing to work longer, knowing that it's, an, um, it's a way to stay economically um, secure, as well as the people, are, people enjoy working. It keeps you engaged. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so what can we do in terms of supporting employers to have workplaces that can accommodate people's needs as they change over time? So I want to ask you, how can Vermont, we've been talking about, yeah. you very kindly walked th us through some of the programs and supports. How can people find out 
How do you make those matches? How can uh, someone watching today learn and say, gee, I'd, I would like to know more about that opportunity? Absolutely. So I would say the first step, if people are interested in learning more about supports as, as you age or qu even just general questions or specific questions, the best place to start is our Vermont Senior Helpline because that will connect people to their local area agency on aging, which is kind of a one-stop shop for these kinds of questions. Um, and I'm and gonna point out that's the toll-free number on the screen that our viewers are seeing right now. Yes, and that is 1-800-642-5119. Uh, how is that different than the website, which again is also on the screen, vermont4a.org? Um, yeah, VermontForA.org is the website that takes people to the um, area agencies on aging. So they can find, figure out which one to connect to from there. Yeah. It's kind of the, the starting point yep. for people. Awesome. Well, Amber has been waiting patiently. <laughs> yeah. uh, I do want to bring you into our conversation, ask you okay. to tell us about, it's called the Vermont Assistive Technology Program. Mm -hmm. uh, just in a nutshell, what does that mean? What's the program all about? Sure, so what our program is all about is helping Vermonters of any age and any need figure out how to be more independent through the use of assistive technology. And I'll be showing you guys a few assistive technology tools so our viewers can understand really kind of what that's about. In Vermont, the uh, assistive technology program is one of um, uh, one of the assistive technology act programs that is actually available in every state and territory in our country. Mm -hmm. um, so, regardless of where you live, you have access to a program that has the same core functions that we have. Um, I don't know about this statewide. What I'm mm -hmm. sure there is a diversity of needs. Mm -hmm. Is as we age, I might expect the answer to this question is yes, that there is more of a need. More and more Vermonters are seeking these assistive technologies. So we definitely see an increase in needs um, as we age. It's just a natural part of aging. And that may you know, include things like hearing loss or reduction in, in vision or maybe some issues with mobility. And so all of those are types of things that assistive technology can assist with. You and I were talking before the program, and there is an irony here that um, sometimes our children, our grandchildren, may be more aware of these types of assistive technologies than, say, uh, my own uh, mother who is aging. Uh, so we have some examples. Let's go ahead and bring them out. But sure. again, one of the one of the um, dilemmas, I guess, as we were talking about, is that. Uh, older Vermonters don't seem to be as aware as the younger mm -hmm. generation of, oh, there is something that can help me. It's it's true, and I will say really quickly that technology can can have an intimidating kind of ring to it. And so as I show you guys a few things, I think I want to demystify what that really yeah. means. Um, and so when we think about assistive technology, we're thinking about not only tools, but strategies for how do we yeah. get creative about being independent. Yeah. So well, one of the things you, again, uh, I got the, the luxury or the fun of seeing some of these things before we started the program. Sure. So you have a few to take us through. I and, do, yeah. Uh, really kind of amazing. This first example is really something that I'd never thought of. Okay, okay, sure. So what I have here, um, so the viewers can see this, is a, is a little tool called Liftware. And this, this spoon has um, a little gyroscopic um, technology inside that actually regulates tremors. So if you have something called an essential tremor and your hand tends to shake when you're trying to eat, this actually helps to negate the tremor. So you can use a spoon. Um, and so, so you, this is a type of, of tool that could help somebody I'm eat I'm holding this up because you have some examples here of the sure. beans, that ex idea of how difficult it would be to eat if you had a hand or body tremor. Sure, so I'm just gonna simulate a type of tremor here and you see that the spoon actually stays level as the hand is shaking. Yep. Well, again, I just think it's a great thing, and uh, some of these we don't all know someone, but as you go through, there are going to be examples we have here of, mm -hmm. oh, I know somebody who could benefit from that. Yeah, uh, yeah. And I love this. I think the next one you're going to bring out relates to vision and it medication. Does. Um, oh, that one? Yeah, absolutely. I have a, I have a, a few... Sorry, I got you out of here. order. This no, one is okay. a, a great concept. That's okay, sure. And I will. I do want to mention that we have over 2,500 pieces of assistive technology that's a, that are available. So this is just a little kind of tip of the iceberg. Um, this is actually a um, magnifier that's designed to fit on a pill bottle. So if you have trouble reading that tiny, tiny print that's on a pill bottle, this can give you three times magnification. 
I'm just going to hold that right there for the viewer. And again, this is something that, as I understand it, goes around the pill bottle. It does. So you literally, I'm going to put the pill bottle in there. I get to look through, and now I can see that tiny, tiny print that reminds me that I'm supposed to take one every four hours, not one every eight hours. Exactly. And, awesome. you know, in addition to low tech devices like this, we have the ability to help folks with reminder devices and okay. um, using applications or using voice reminders and things like that that might also help with medication management. Right, and I just wanted to jump in just to say, because I think this is um, such a great piece too, because one of the things that we know is as we age, people are taking more medications. It's, 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 you know, what happens for many people. And it's one of the things that we know is heading people into the hospital yes. is, when they, is when they inadvertently misuse medications. Well, you're um, underscoring not only the, uh, I thought the cool aspect, yeah. but the really important Impor aspect. Uh, earlier we were giving uh, web information and mm -hmm. I know that one of the things that can be difficult as we age are little tiny keyboards, mm -hmm. uh, forget sure. operating, you know, surfing the web, but this mm -hmm. next example gives us an opportunity to be a little bit more proficient um, with keyboarding. Sure, so what I have here is um, called a Chester Creek keyboard and this is a, um, a low vision keyboard so you're gonna have larger keys, you're gonna have larger visual targets and you're gonna have this nice black on, on yellow high contrast. And so when you think about helping somebody to access the computer to maybe address social isolation where they're able to get on and they're able to communicate um, with friends via email or Facebook, um, this can provide that kind of access. We have a couple of other examples, but I also have a couple of other questions Absolutely. that I want to make sure that we can get to before we run out of time. And that sure. is, um, if someone, uh, how do we know that uh, what technologies might be available? Mm -hmm. In other words, uh, yeah. essentially the same uh, question I was asking earlier, how do we, what's the contact point? How do we find out about this stuff? There's several ways that you can find out about that. Um, so we have three assistive technology tryout centers that cover the state. Um, one of our tryout centers is at the Asa Bloomer building in Rutland. One is at the Waterbury State Office Complex. And then the other one is at Mann Hall at the University of Vermont Center on Disability and Community Inclusion. Each of those AT tryout centers is staffed by an AT access specialist that can meet with you individually. And our director, Lee Harnois, has put that on the screen so Perfect. let me just walk through the uh, starting at the top there's a toll-free number for mm -hmm. anybody in the state yep, and absolutely. that toll-free number 750-6355 and, mm -hmm. and over on the right side there's a, there's a web page that again accessible for anybody mm -hmm. now again just asking you to go through and Lee will put that back up those tryout centers mm -hmm. because uh, I guess it is important in that first group Franklin Grand Isle Chittenden and Addison to go ahead and be in Burlington the, the great thing is is that um, a, a Vermonter doesn't have to know which tryout center they need to go okay. to. They can contact our 800 number, 1-800-750-6355, and Emma Cobb, our AT Services Coordinator, will connect them to the right tryout center. Okay. We have just a couple of minutes left. Uh, I know one of the things that comes to mind for me is what maybe some of the uncertainty at the federal level as there are policy discussions about, uh, earlier mentioned Meals on Wheels, uh, um, is the state of Vermont and, and the department, are, do you have answers yet about what will be able to occur with some of the supports as we move forward for older Vermonters uh, in 2017 and 18? Or is, or is it fair to say there's some uncertainty taking place? I can start with that. If that so um, our grant to operate the Vermont Assistive Technology Program is under the Administration for Community Living, Federal Department of Health and Human Services, and um, we're a formula grant, and so at this point we don't have any indication that our services as the Assistive Technology Program are going to see a reduction or, um, or be affected at this point. Right. I think we're watching closely, you know, because yeah, so, there's a lot of people because are. there's a lot, you know, a lot, a yeah. lot going on. But I think the Vermont and, and the department are really committed to these programs. We yeah. know that they're effective Absolutely. and um, and and can really help people. So we're going to do everything we can to make sure that they're here for the long run. Mm -hmm. Well, I need to stop us there as we're out of time. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you both very much for coming in. Not only thank really you. cool visuals and things to learn, but also some of the policy stuff and other reasons why that's a great opportunity to celebrate Older Americans Month, and particularly here in Vermont. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> that is our program for today. We know you have choices, so thanks for choosing us. I'm Will Michael, inviting you to join us back here again each weekday afternoon for another visit across the fence.